Yes. Joining us on the hotline, senior NBA writer and insider for Bleacher Report and Fox Sports 1, Rick Buecher. Rick, the Bob Myers press conference? So yeah. A half hour after the game? Explain that to me. Uh, because there, the, the number one question is, why was Kevin Durant playing? Did they not know that, I mean, their anticipation is this was a very severe injury. If he's in a boot, uh, there's been a lot of speculation about the calf versus the Achilles. As you guys mentioned, a lot of people speculating that, uh, that this was, uh, that this affected his Achilles. There's some unknowns here, and there was so much mystery around uh, what actually was going on with him and what, uh, what he was suffering. Uh, uh, this is a smart move by the Warriors in that I don't know if it's getting out in front of it because so much has been speculated up to this point, and there was so much mystery around why he was out and what he was dealing with and then why he came back at this stage after one practice. Uh, after one practice in which he couldn't even go three on three, and now suddenly he's good to go, and you have a non-contact injury. It wasn't it wasn't an extreme situation. He he pushed off you know once, then twice, and it clearly went. I mean, there's there are some real issues here uh, concerning why Kevin Durant was on the court, and I would expect that Bob Myers is going to address how they came to the decision to put him out there. Well, it's very curious, right? Because 72 hours ago, we have the reports that everybody's frustrated, obviously frustration with the situation, but frustration with Kevin Durant specifically as to whether he was ready to go or not. Part of me, as he started getting ready to suit up and this ramped up, Rick, was wondering, well, had he already decided that he was coming back to Golden State? So he he was going to go for it with this squad? (laughs) I mean, because otherwise, why would you risk free agency and everything else? Yeah, look, the... I've been told more than once in the last week or so that whatever KD does, he's probably going to change his mind 25 times between now and when he actually <laughs> makes the decision. So it, 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 I don't know that his decision to play would be informed by anything other than his desire to play. And there was never a question in my mind that he wanted to play. Mm-hmm. Any speculation about, he wants the Warriors to find out how badly they need him or any of that. It's just that it doesn't fit KD's profile. He wants to be out there. Now, the real question is, and I can tell you, I know people that are close to him that were advising him, dude, it's not worth the risk. Knowing they knew the severity of the injury, it's not the worth the risk. Don't play. And he didn't listen to them. And so he listened to somebody and the, and and the Golden State Warriors, if they, I mean, by virtue of the fact that he played, they always had the wherewithal to say, sorry, KD, I know you want to play. Based on what we understand, it's not a good, it's not a, it's not a good risk. It's not, we know you want to play and we'd love to have you play. And so that's the other issue, you know, Bob Myers has to deal with here because there are going to be recriminations. I mean, just, let's face it. He played a quarter and, and, and change, and it wasn't an extraordinary move. And if it's as serious as, as it, we're being led to believe, then there are some real questions as to why the Warriors allowed him to get on the court. You know when he didn't look right to me, Rick, because the first quarter, hey, catch and shoot, he was hitting shots. Yeah. The Warriors were off, you know, they were off on, on emotion and adrenaline. But there yeah. was that play Early in the second quarter, when he was bringing the ball up and Pascal Siakam was on him one on one, and mm-hmm. the floor was clear, and mm-hmm. Durant looked like he was having trouble getting by him, and and Siakam knocked the ball out of bounds. I called a foul on him, which is kind of a a generous call for Durant, and that yep. was when I thought, you know what, something's still up with him because yep. he, he there's no way that Pascal Siakam should have knocked the ball out of his hands, dribbling up the court when he's got the entire. There wasn't guys dr- dropping down on him to to make it a two on one. I mean, he has the whole court to bring the ball up, and he gets it knocked out of bounds. Right. Uh, I, I, I saw the same thing. I saw the same thing in Kevin, Kevin's game tonight that I saw with Clay Thompson when he came back in game four, which is he was, he was playing a measured game. He wasn't trying to extend himself. Uh, he wasn't trying to test that hamstring. He knew he could be a jump-and-shoot guy. He always had his feet under him. He wasn't trying to make any, any dramatic moves, and for the most part, that's, that's not Clay's game. Uh, but 
KD, and uh, you may be right. I, I it, he, he looked. I mean, I don't know how much of it it's it might be the calf and how much it is he just hasn't played in a while and now he's got to bring it up uh, uh, under pressure or he's maybe he's a little tentative and pushing off on it. But he did try to make a uh, to make a move when it went and. Again, I, I just it wasn't a, it was a typical move for him, and the fact that it would go on that that early just raises all sorts of questions for me. Again, I'm going to go back to I I just don't understand why with the way things and this is hindsight obviously, but why the Warriors allowed him on the court? It it just it it raises some real red flags in terms of, look, they've been pushing the envelope. Andre Godala, DeMarcus Cousins comes back, and he plays 28 minutes in his second game back. And uh, I mean, there's been a lot of questions. They, they clearly are going for it, no doubt about it. And I'm sure KD wanted to go for it. There's just some times where you got to take the bat out of the guy's hands because, not to mix sports, but you just you, you, the competitor always wants to go. And cooler heads have to prevail and say, we're going to think big picture on, on, on your behalf. Well, you just go through the whole thing. Rick Buecher joins us, Bleacher Report, senior writer, Fox Sports 1 analyst, Buecher and Friends podcast as well. Find that over on iTunes. Find him on Twitter at Rick Buecher, R-I-C-B-U-C-H-E-R. Here at the Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon from the Geico Studios. But that seems to be the consistent theme with, with the Warriors, guys either convincing them that they're good enough to go or yep. or some bad decisions, right? Because Looney was back out there again, right? I know yep. it was all about pain management and stuff, but he had a fairly innocuous run in with Kyle Lowry that looked like someone had just, you know, done a, a splash from the top rope on him. Yeah, well, I was actually told by the. It's funny you mentioned Lowry because the, the the Raptors say that Lowry basically is playing with the same thing in his hand, which you can shoot it up, and so you don't feel it during the game, and then when that wears off, you're feeling it afterward. Uh, in a massive way, but you can't do more damage to whatever it is. And so, uh, yeah, it's, I think you bring up a fair point in that the, the Warriors aren't alone in this, but I believe ultimately the reason that you're seeing the Warriors do what they're doing, uh, pushing the envelope, uh, taking extreme chances health-wise, is because they know this is the end of the road. This is, the, this is their shot for a three-peat, and let's go for it, let's you know, let's sacrifice whatever we have to sacrifice moving forward. Uh, and I'm, what I'm really curious about when it comes to KD and the Warriors is, how does War- is, is KD going to have any questions about the Warriors allowing him to play? I don't know that. I don't know that he would in terms of he signed off, but that's kind of the risk that you run too. I mean, this isn't, isn't this a little bit with the – Kawhi Leonard and and the reason he left San Antonio is that he ultimately he didn't trust the medical staff. Mm-hmm. Well, based on what happened here, I, I'm I'm not saying it's happening. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it opens the door to the possibility that KD looks at the the Warriors medical staff and says, if they told him if they told him, hey, you know, you're good, give it a shot, and this happens and it has any long term effect on him, that changes the the dynamic in a big way. All right, Rick, let's get to the game for a couple of minutes. Clearly the last 90 seconds. This is how I kind of summed it up following the game. There was clearly, even though the the Warriors had a couple of mistakes, you know, Boogie gets called for the illegal screen, there was one team that knew what they needed to do in the final 90 seconds, and there was one team that didn't. And to me, that's how I sum everything up. Yeah, and and uh, that's concise. I mean, that is... That's in essence the the Warriors have been in all of these situations before. They knew exactly what they wanted to run. Steve Kerr knew what they wanted wanted to run. Every player on the floor knew what, you know what they were looking for and what their options were. And there's just a comfort level when you've done it before and you've done it successfully uh, under the the most uh, pressure high pressure situations. There's a confidence that comes along with that. And the Spurs were searching and largely just kind of hanging on Ka- Kawhi, can you, can you bring it home for us? And that makes things very predictable. And for a while there, even as predictable as it might be, he was still getting it done. But if you're talking percentages, the team that can show you an array of things and everybody knows what's on the table and they know what option A, B, and C are, and they know that option A, B, and C are 
uh, are, are legit, you can approach it a different way as opposed to, yikes, let's look around. Kawhi's the only one who's ever been in a, in a closeout game in the finals before. Let's see what he can do to bring it home. And so it's, you're absolutely right. It was nothing more than one team having been here before and, and out-executed the other that was searching for an answer. Hey, Rick, uh, I want to go back to KD for a second because we're getting in some news right now. Chris Mannix, mm-hmm. Kareth Burke both tweeting out. Bob Myers emotional talking right now uh, during his press conference, revealing that, in fact, Kevin Durant does have an Achilles injury. He says, mm-hmm. we don't know the extent of it. An MRI is coming for Kevin Durant tomorrow. Uh, talking about the injury, he said, if you have to blame me, so he's saying, blame me for Kevin Durant's injury. Yeah, it's. I mean, he's falling on the sword uh, for for the organization. Obviously, Bob Myers isn't the one who ultimately said KD should go out there. Now, did he approve of it? Yeah, he probably. And could he have vetoed it? Yeah, he probably could have. But much like any of us, he was. He, he's basing that on the advice of uh, his medical staff and the trainers and the the druthers of KD. And I have no doubt that KD wanted to play. And I'm, I'm, I have no doubt that he was pressing them. I can, yeah, I can do this. I can go out there and do this. But it's a little bit like Steve Kerr. You know, there was one point in this series where I thought, wow, uh, the way game three went when they sat Clay and the way Clay played in game four, a measured game but still gave them scoring, I thought, did they blow an opportunity? Because Toronto was figuring some things out in game three and the Warriors just didn't have enough firepower to be able to 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 win that game and so toronto i knew was going to be stronger in game four i knew that they were just uh, now that they, they got a taste of playing against this wounded animal they're, they're going to be much better in game four uh with or without clay and so i thought man but if they could have played clay in game three maybe they would have gotten that game and this would look entirely different you're going back to toronto 2-2 and so in this instance, you, you play KD, and um, I, I feel like it was almost the opposite. I feel like they pushed the envelope. It was the closeout game, let's get him out there, let's take a shot, and the consequences have been paid. You can follow him on Twitter, at Rick Buecher. That is at Rick Buecher, Bleacher Report, senior writer, Fox Sports 1 analyst. Rick, as always, thanks a bunch for stopping by so much. We'll talk to you next week, my friend. You got it, guys. Thanks, Rick. All right, there's great stuff from Rick Buchan. Now, you're going to hear Bob Meyer's press conference coming up next, and I, I realize that we've gone from the excitement level of the end of a game to the Warriors GM talking about Kevin Durant's injury. It is, in fact, an Achilles injury. The extent of it won't be known till tomorrow. And I know that Rick Buchan said, listen, we're waiting to hear – Medical staff, did they clear him? Did they not? And I realize we're, you know, we're, we're still at the beginning of this story. But I got to think, if you're having a press conference, you feel responsible. Or no, you, have to, you have to get out in front of a story that may get really ugly for you if you let him come back and he clearly couldn't. Well, and that's the thing, right? Is that one of the names that you'll hear a, a bunch was a a trainer named Chelsea Lane who left before the season. And now everything was, well, it's got to be cleared by the medical staff. That was the mantra over the last week. And the fact that he's sitting up and taking questions and discussing this quite so quickly. uh, Yeah, I can't wait for the expose. We're going to hear from Bob Myers and have more on this breaking story. Coming up next, Kevin Durant's injury is an Achilles injury. We're going to hear from Bob Myers right now. Very emotional Bob Myers. Decide for yourself. Warriors GM talking about Kevin Durant's injury after he got hurt tonight in Game Five. Kevin had a, it's it's an Achilles injury. I don't know uh, the extent of it. He'll have an MRI tomorrow. Um, pri- prior to coming back, he went through four weeks with our medical team, and um, it was thorough and it was experts and multiple MRIs and multiple doctors um, and we felt good about the process. Uh, He was cleared to play tonight. That that was a collaborative decision. Um, I don't believe there's anybody to blame but I understand this this world and um, if you have to 
you can blame me. I, ru I run our basketball de operations department. And um, let me tell you something about Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant loves to play basketball. And the people that questioned whether he wanted to get back to this team were wrong. And I'm not here to. He's one of the. He's one of the most misunderstood people. He's a good teammate. He's a good person. It's not fair. I'm lucky to know him. I don't know. Um, I don't have all the uh, information on what, what really the extent of what it all means until we get an MRI. But the people that worked with him and cleared him are good people. They're good people. Mark, first question in the front. Bob, Mark, Medina, Barry, and News Group. With all due respect, what's your reasoning to say to point the finger at you? This is, I'm, I am um, the president of the basketball. If you have to, and I don't think there's anybody to, to blame, but I get it. That stuff happens. I hope nobody does. I don't think it should land on anybody. But if you feel like you need to. Oh, I really thought he was going to say, I'm the president of everybody You know, in the middle of all that. Look, I, I feel, part of me feels bad because obviously the guy's emotional, right? Mm -hmm. And you hear it. But listen to some of the things that he says, all right? Kevin Durant's a great teammate. He's misunderstood. He's so great. Okay. All right. Why are you why are we saying this? Why twice does he have to say there's no one to blame? But blame me. But there's no one to blame. Right? It's this is what you hear when if you if if you hear uh someone from a company stand up and go, Boy, we had to, I'm sorry we had to recall all these you know, uh, cans, but I, I don't know how they didn't get inspected. It's nobody's fault. It felt, look, blame us. But this is one of those, hey, Kevin Durant came back and got hurt, but let's realize that this was nobody's fault and this is just something that happened. It just, it strikes me as you're hearing the same words you would hear from a press conference where people want to deflect blame from something. I mean, that, I mean, I look, I get he's upset. I, look, look, I, I don't think he's not emotional. I don't think he's fake crying. I mean, obviously he is emotional about Kevin Durant and feels bad, but just the fact he had to have this press conference and to hear some of those trigger phrases, there's nobody to blame, the people who cleared him are good people. I mean, that that stuff, whoa, whoa, this is, uh, I'm going to defend people and because I know there's going to be a faction of the public who are going to come after us because we didn't do something right and someone suffering because of it. Well, the Players Association is going to be on the hotline with them immediately. Are you kidding me? As soon as he went down, the first thought through my head was, all right, how quickly before LeBron James or other people at the top of the NBA Players Association start chiming in about Durant getting back on the court? To some of it, it's the, all right, I'll take the blame for it. But it was a collaborative effort, right, between the training staff and to Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's his own corporation. How many times did he tell you? He told, he said it in no uncertain terms. I'm Kevin Durant. Multiple times during the year. He made the decision to get back on the court. He could have said no. Right? So, I, you know, the, the tier, I mean, everybody is complicit, I guess, is what it comes down to. You got a lot, of, a lot of folks with their hand in the cookie jar. I'm curious to see what that final discussion was, right, when those details start to leak from whoever decides to do it, hopefully on one of the burner accounts or something else. And I, and I feel bad for Kevin Durant. I wanted to see how that game was going to end with him on. You always want to see it the best. And right now, you know, Nick Nurse and everybody getting off the hook. Don't worry, we're coming back with a bat for you here and, and soon enough for that terrible coaching job in the final five minutes. But for, for this, for Bob Myers, 
you know, I, did he tell him, you know, blank you, I don't, I'm leaving anyway, you know, <laughs> or that, you know, you're going to pay me my 31.5 when I opt in and I, you're going to pay me to not play. I, I mean, there's other parts to this conversation that spin out for sure. Look, we're going to hear some more of Bob Myers right now. Listen for some of the phrases that you hear someone use in a press conference when they have to defend something really bad. All right, this is him talking about Kevin Durant and Achilles' injury. It looked really bad, and an emotional Warriors GM felt the need to meet the media following the game to talk about it. Let's take a listen. Kevin had a, it's it's an Achilles injury. I don't know uh, the extent of it. He'll have an MRI tomorrow. Um, pr- prior to coming back, he. Went through four weeks with our medical team, and um, it was thorough, and it was experts and multiple MRIs and multiple doctors. Um. Okay, stop right there. Right away, right away. Hey, we went through all this stuff. We went through multiple weeks of this, MRIs, doctors, all of these things. Rick Buecher told us, Kevin Durant's people were saying, dude, don't play with this injury. It's too bad. It's really bad. Don't play. But now here's the first thing is Bob Myers, emotional, emotional and crying, but saying but calculated, we went through everything. But very calculated yeah, he's crying, putting but still that checklist able, out yes, there. But still calculated and saying, but we had the injury to, like, taken a look at. We had multiple MRIs. We had multiple pain, all while being very emotional. Right, a collaborative thing. But I'm able to thing. tell you everything no, that we right. did. Keep going. And we felt good about the process. Uh, he was cleared to play tonight. That, that was a collaborative decision. Um, right there, stop right there. I don't, collaborative decision. Collaborative decision. We we said it, and he said it was a collaborative decision to make it let him play. Now, a collaborative decision could be the doctor saying, we don't know that he could play. Kevin Durant saying, I want to play, and the doctor saying, okay, great, go play. That could be. That's a collaborative decision. All right, so realize, there's another thing he said right away. Collaborative decision. Go ahead. I don't believe there's anybody to blame. But yeah, right understand. there, boom. No one to blame. Right there. No one to blame. Want to get this out. I'm emotional. But here's what I know I got to say. I got to make sure I get all of these points in. Right? Emotional. No one to blame. Uh, we work with him so much. Collaborative decision. All these things you are hearing when people have to defend something really bad. Keep it going. This, this world, and um, if you have to, you can blame me. I, ru- I run our basketball de- operations department, and um, let me tell you something about Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant loves to play basketball, and the people that question. All right, now stop right here. Stop right here. Now let me tell you about Kevin Durant. Let me tell you what a great guy he is. But boy, is he going to be pissed at us because. We wound up coming back and playing when maybe he shouldn't have. Let me tell. Why does? Why, of course, Kevin Durant loves to play basketball. Of course, Kevin Durant is going to say, "Great." What does this have to do with anything? Realize when a guy's being this emotional, all of this stuff is calculated. All of this stuff he spent all this time since Kevin Durant's injury, getting ready to say and talk about following the game. Let's hear more. Whether he wanted to get back to this team, we're wrong, and I'm not here to. He's one of the he's one of the most misunderstood people. He's a good teammate. All right, stop right here. Stop right here. Why 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 do you have to say that he's misunderstood and a good teammate? Why? What does this have to do with him coming back from his injury? We know he's a good teammate. We know he's misunder why? Why do you feel the need to say this in a press conference, right? I mean it. I I, I get that you're emotional about Kevin Durant and Warrior, but this is going on right now. This is we got to protect ourselves because what's coming next is not going to be good because you're going to hear Durant's people said not to play. You're going to hear that maybe he shouldn't have played, but still he pushed to play, and maybe the Warriors medical staff may not have been completely in conjunction. Now, this I'm just speculating because why else would the Warriors have this conversation? If everything was above board, there's no need to talk about it. There's just, it's awful. Kevin Durant, we're going to find out more tomorrow, and I feel really bad. It's awful, but we'll, we'll know more tomorrow. But no, instead, here's more of an emotional press conference. Keep it going. He's a good person. It's not fair. I'm lucky to know him. 
I don't know um I don't have all the uh, information on what, what really the extent of what it all means until we get an MRI. All right, so stop it right here. So then why are we having the press conference? Seems like this could why have waited are we having the press day. conference. Yeah. Why having the press conference then? Trust me, this is a mo- this is meant to put this visual out there. The Warriors feel awful. No one's to blame. We worked with Kevin. All of these things. There's no reason to say this until you know what's what's really going on tomorrow or the next day. This was this was a complete PR push by the Warriors. This is really shameful. This is really really shameful by them. But he got the tears right. <laughs> 